the video presents Astonishing Adventures in Atomic Annihilation. Hey there, Vault Dwellers. It's me, Vidiot. Today, we're finishing our discussion on Vault 111. We're flipping sides and talking about events from the Vault staff's perspective. Last time, we talked about how the Vault was built to test cryogenic stasis. What you don't know is the lengths they would have taken to ensure the experiment went off without a hitch. Be rest assured, it's pretty messed up. There's a lot of detail to go over, so let's get started. Let's begin at the intake process. Once they get word of the impending doom on the surface, the personnel gather at the entrance to ensure that it's a quick and easy process. Security is in charge of maintaining order while the science team makes sure all the residents are accounted for and escorts them to the pods. Oh wait, I forgot to mention a couple things. Security is also supposed to prevent anyone including staff members from trying to evacuate the vault. And the research guys have to make sure that any non-residents that somehow makes it past the military dudes outside are asked to step aside or do so by force if necessary. What's more is that once residents are settled into their pods, the detainees are killed and shoved into unused pods. That's some straight up Nazi level biz right there. The overseer himself has his own special orders. One of which even the staff is unaware. This dude has to ensure that under no circumstances are residents to be released from stasis. Not even for life-saving measures. Life-saving measures can be taken, but only if 80% of the residents have died in stasis. However, they must remain in the pods in this contingency. The staff is made aware of this. What they don't know is that the overseer has been ordered to consider the personnel expendable. Anyone who becomes insubordinate or tries to evacuate the vault prematurely is given capital punishment. That means execution, yo. Now since no non-residents made it in and everything went smoothly, no one was executed. However, that doesn't explain why the vault is empty, save for the skellies on the floor. For that, we're going to have to start just prior to the apocalypse. Upon reading the Overseer's logs, you'll find that before the opening of a vault, he was very optimistic about the experiment, saying, I can only imagine what wonders our residents will get to witness. I almost wish I could join them and see the promise of our future realized. The thing is though, Mr. Overseer, they didn't exactly consent to being frozen alive. Fast forward a bit and we get to October 23rd, 2077, aka Doomsday. Based on the Overseer's logs at this point, we find out that most of the staff made it into the vault, except for some guy named Nordhagen, which is probably the lift operator. We also find out that things went smoothly, and how he thought people would have been more suspicious. They must have been too overwhelmed to question the cryogenic pods, he wrote. Well, Mr. Overseer, again, no one expects to survive a nuke only to be frozen, you son of a- Around the same time, the security log writer, we'll call him Herc, short for Hercules Mulligan, my favorite character in Hamilton. Herc voices his doubts. He felt that it wasn't right for them to be frozen like they were, and maybe they should have been told. In the following months, our boy Herc was growing more suspicious that the Overseer was keeping everyone out of the loop. At first, it wasn't a big deal, such as during the Christmas party when none of the scientists or Overseer showed up. He shrugged it off, saying that the all clear, saying that it was safe to leave the vault, was coming soon. In March of 87, people started to worry that maybe there is never going to be an all clear signal, and that they are starting to run out of food. The situation was not lost on the Overseer. The mandatory shelter period, which is 180 days after the vault has been sealed, was nearing its final weeks. His attempt at trying to keep people calm only made them more concerned. On April 23rd, Herc and crew had a meeting discussing their concern and after voicing those concerns to the Overseer, he put the whole facility on lockdown. With no sign of the all clear and food becoming scarce, a handful of Herc's crew confronted the Overseer demanding to be allowed to leave, which only caused him to shut himself in his office and demanded the rest of the food, weapons, and medicine be delivered to his office 
or else. After Herc discussed it with everyone, they agreed that it was time to leave, by force if necessary. Leave a la revolution style. At this point we don't exactly know what happened. We, but we can do a bit of amateur forensics. Based on the evidence around the first body, you can clearly see bullet holes on the floor and the wall behind the chair. With the way the shots line up, and the damage to the generator, we can assume that the person firing the gun was standing about here. In the overseer's office, you see a couple of bullet holes on the opposite side of the desk. And considering the position of the body, we can assume that the person was sitting at the desk. Who else but the overseer would be sitting there? We can also assume that the shots were being fired from the front side of the desk. In the entrance of the vault, we see more bullet holes here, 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 and on the back wall. We can assume that they began firing as soon as they opened the door, turned to the left, and fired, and came to this side and fired more. However, in this case, there is no body, meaning whoever it was must have given up, and they left with the main group. Considering the execution style end to the Overseer, I guess you could say that it was cold as ice. So, question of the episode. What do you think happened to the people who left? Did they die in the harshness of the wasteland? Or become the ancestors of the current population of the settlements? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Also, considering I have like two subscribers, how about helping me grow by sharing this video with a friend or two? Or don't. I'm not the boss of you. And I'm still going to be making videos regardless. That's it for now. See you in the next episode of Astounding Adventures in Atomic Annihilation.